Oh, Robin, thank you so much for having me today. Such a treat. I'm so happy you're here, Molly. Um, you know, it's sometimes on in this online world, we feel like we really know someone. And I feel that way with you because you have such an incredible presence and you've really built your brand so solidly that your content, your face, everything about you and what you're doing is so clear. And I, I love when I see that because that's always my MO when I'm working with my clients. So you're a great example of what it's like to have a personal brand and build a foundation for your business so that the sky is the limit for you. And I just love what you're doing and all of the positive energy that you put out to the world online. Oh, well, thank you so much. I, I think it's so important in the beginning. And I think a lot of us fall kind of prey to this is we think of what we should put out there or what other people's expectations of us. And we try to fit in these little boxes or curate our feed and social media to look a certain way. And really where I started to really uh, get traction and where I think a lot of people do is when we're like, no, but this is me. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to put what I want out there. And whether it's received well or not, at least it's me and it's the message I want to get across. Someone said to me at one point, and this always sticks with me, anytime I hit the post button on anything that I put out there now, is if God forbid something happened to you today, the last three posts, do they reflect what you want people to remember about you? And I think about that all the time. Anytime I, I post anything, it's like, is this a reflection of me? What I want my kids to think of me when they look back on you know, what I'm writing about or talking about. And so that really, really sticks with me. I love that so much. That's such a powerful thing to think about. Okay. So we kind of got off track because I jumped right in, but yes. I, would you tell the listeners a little bit about your journey and how you got to where you are today? Because just like so many of us, it's been nonlinear, it's zigged and zagged, but you always found something positive in every turn and you have created something out of nothing initially. So I would love for you to expand on that a little bit. Absolutely. And, you know, I could go way back, but we'd be here for hours. So I'm going to get to the point of my life because I think this resonates most with a lot of people as when I was going through my divorce and I had to listen, I've been an entrepreneur for 20 years. And so I've had many zigs and zags pre-marriage, during marriage and, and after marriage. But I'm going to cut to the time of my life, which I know a lot of people resonate with because a lot of us start over in one way or another or have to pivot, especially after this pandemic, you know, the past few years, we've all had to pivot in one way or another. And during my marriage, I had started a clothing store in town and it had, you know, moderate success. And I found myself now a single mom of two girls. And I really had to have a moment like, okay, this is what I know how to do. I now have to figure out a way to, to take what I know how to do and multiply it about five times because I'm about to be living on 20% of what I'm used to be living on. So it's like, okay, what is my skill set? What, what do I know how to do? Okay, I can do this retail store. I can do PR. I can do the marketing for it. So let's learn how to expand that and make it bigger. So I opened up another store in a larger city with more foot traffic. Long story short, the divorce was becoming final and it turned out in the divorce for a long time, we were, I was under the impression that I was going to be able to move to Chicago where my second store was, my more profitable store, and with my kids. And then in the 11th hour of our divorce proceedings, it turned out that I was not going to be allowed to move to Chicago, that the only place I could move to was Florida, which is nowhere near Chicago or New Jersey where my two stores were. And I didn't want to put my kids through a you know court battle of any kind. So I just waved the white flag and said, okay. So I closed my stores and we moved to Florida where I knew nobody. And again, I had six months where I just wanted to make sure my kids were okay. I wanted to get a lay of the land down there and figure out what was my next chapter. And I'm going to be honest, it was not my best six months. I was playing victim. I was very much in a victim mentality. I can't believe I ended up here. Life isn't fair. I had everything. Now I have nothing. And really, I really was the worst version of myself. And it took a really good friend of mine who came down and took me out to lunch, who told me this. Because it's really important that we surround ourselves with friends and people who tell you what you need to hear, not necessarily what you want to hear. And she said, why are you playing so small? This is not you. This is, this is not who you are. You need to like figure yourself out. And she took a little napkin. We were sitting at a table and she wrote out Hill and Brand Media. She goes, Molly, 
What you love to do is, is help others, help yourself market themselves, market their passions and put themselves out there. That should be your business. You do it anyway. So figure it out and get going. Stop sitting there in this victim mentality. And she was 100% correct. And so um, I'm forever thankful to her because she really is the, the kind of pivot I needed, that mindset shift I needed to start something new and to have the courage to do so. so shortly after that day, Hillenbrand Media was started. And at first, I started the company to help others kind of promote their passions, to get them comfortable on Instagram, Facebook, you know, putting themselves in front of the camera or their product or their business idea. And a local television station down here, Ion South Florida, asked me to come on and not only help them grow and have more presence, but also be an on-air host. Now, this is not in my wheelhouse. I'm very comfortable behind the camera, not in front of it. I, I tell everyone else to get in front of the camera. I'm the director, not, not the person. But they saw something that I didn't see in me. And so that's another important, I think, thing to think about is when opportunities come to you that seem out of the box or something that you're not comfortable yet, it doesn't mean you can't do it. It just means that skill set hasn't been tapped yet. And in that moment, I had a really important mindset shift of going from, I don't know how to do that. to I don't know how to do that yet yes. because we are all so capable. And that one word that yet has made all the difference in my life. And so I said yes to what scared me and I got in front of the camera and I wasn't good. I really wasn't good the first time few, not few, 10, 20, 30 times, but I learned, I learned the skill set that was needed to make it happen. During this time, they also wanted to grow their presence, as I said. And so I said, well, if you want to grow your presence, you can't just be in South Florida. You got to be ion everywhere, New York, Chicago, LA, we got to be everywhere. And so they said, great, go do that. So again, I'm thrown into another arena where I don't know how to produce. That's not my skill set, but I was like, all right, I've seen how it's done. I'm going to just pour everything I have into figuring it out. And I figured it out over that next year. And I learned how to produce and make these segments. And, you know, I met incredible people. And that's what brought me to where I am today is I learned all these new skill sets. I learned this, this new career that I absolutely loved, which I never would have thought for myself. And my favorite part of producing these segments for the ION channels was when the cameras were being put away. And I was sitting, talking with the entrepreneurs and they kind of let down their guard and they're talking about their journeys and what they really struggled with getting to the point where they were today. And I was like, man, why are we not catching this on camera? This is what I want to know about people's struggles, how they overcame them, their mindset shifts of how they overcame them. I think that's really, really important. Yeah. So that's what kind of got me started with the, the concept of the spotlight series, which is what I film now, interviewing amazing public figures, celebrities and entrepreneurs, discussing their journey and how they got to where they are today. Mm -hmm. Which you do such a remarkable job of capturing people's essence, their soul, their spirit, everything about them. So your interviews are fantastic. And so are you still working for ION? South Florida. I work for myself now. However, if they need me to pitch in, I'm always more than happy to, you know, here and there. Um, yeah. I still have a great relationship with them, but I'm solely focused now on producing for myself. Okay. Because my I see you traveling all over the place, which I have to say, it looks like a glamorous life, right? When you're jet setting to all these different cities and wearing cool outfits and all these things. But the reality is, and I just listened to one of your podcast episodes about having it all. And I think a lot of us as entrepreneurs think that we need to have it all, or we should have it all. And the reality is we can't have it all. And I love how you talk about that as an entrepreneur, a single mom, you are doing it all, but you don't have it all at the exact same time. And I think it's really important to note because there's this persona, Molly Dare, she's got everything. She's amazing. But the reality is you've chosen your priorities and you focus where your energy can be emphasized and focused intentionally at the right time. It's such an important conversation. I think And Kim Kaup, who I was having that, that conversation with, you know, has talked a lot about this and, and I feel very strongly about it as well. You know, our definition of having it all, or at least mine, I'm going to speak on my behalf, has changed. What having it all looks like to me in my 20s was one thing, in my 30s was one thing, and now in my 40s is something else. And it, people get this one view of me, and that's the danger of social media, right? I put a lot out there, but I don't put everything out there. And so what you don't see is I've had sacrifices. There's a lot that I've sacrificed. There's a lot that I'm not able to do. There's a lot that I don't have, but I make choices just like everybody else does on what my priorities are and what matters to me in my life. 
And so, you know, for me personally, being very transparent, I've put off relationships, right? I don't have someone in my life and that has been my choice. And some people, you know, they're like, oh, that must be so lonely. And I said, well, you can look at it one or two ways. You can look at it as loneliness or you can look at it as freedom. And I look at it as a freedom in my life that it gives me to, to be who I am, to do what I want. I have two amazing girls who are watching me and I'm very cognizant of that. And so the choices that I make are either for myself or for my two kids and showing them what it takes to be a woman out there in the world who doesn't have it all. They know that I don't have it all or that there's there's parts of my life that are missing, but I wanna show them that no matter what life hands you, whatever deal you're given, that you can make the most of it and you can make the best of it. And I feel like that's my job as their mom to show them that life isn't gonna go the way that you planned. It certainly doesn't look anything like what I thought it was gonna look like in my teens and in my twenties. You know, having it all to me was the the perfect husband and the perfect house and the perfect family life and being on the school board and being, you know, that person. And that's not how my life turned out, but it doesn't mean I'm less than. It doesn't mean I'm not whole. I'm still whole. I'm still Molly Dare, no matter what my life is or how it, you know, twists and turns. I still stand for what I stand for. I still have, you know, my priorities in check. And however that unfolds is what my life is just supposed to be. Yeah, I love that. I love it so much. And I think that we're all given different journeys, right? And it's what we do with those journeys. And, you know, like you said, you that you had that six month time frame and you could have stayed in that mindset of victim. And instead you flipped the switch. And it's so important to realize like our brain just naturally scientifically gravitates towards negative. So if we have a negative experience and we don't flip that conversation in our brain, then that negative is going to overpower everything else in our lives. And so it's really important to do exactly what you did. So I think it's so inspiring. And I think it's a good message for all female entrepreneurs, especially those of us who are moms that you choose your priorities and you go all in, in the moment that you're in. And I think that's a great way to live because you avoid burnout. You avoid guilt and shame when you can't be present in other moments. So love it. So let's talk, Molly, as a teen, you had a very traumatic, I guess, devastating experience with Lyme's disease and that carried over, but that taught you a lot of resilience and it taught you to become fearless. And I would love for you to talk to the listeners about that because as entrepreneurs, fear holds us back so frequently and courage is not the absence of fear. It's the ability to take action despite of the fear. And you have a great thought process around fear. And I would love for you to share that with the listeners. Yeah, thank you so much. It's so funny. It's not until recently that I I even correlated what happened to me in my teens to how that affected my mindset in my life. Because during it, like during any tough situation in life, you're not thinking like, oh, this is going to make me strong. I'm so thankful for this. You're kind of just going through it. And so in my teens, you know, I had Lyme disease. I had a horrible, horrible strain of it that had me in and out of hospitals for three years straight. I went to school, middle school with an IV pole because I was, you know, medicated intravenously by a nurse twice a day. I mean, it was bad. And then I was in and out of the hospitals. And for a moment in time, I couldn't really move from the neck down. And then I lost the ability to speak the words that were in my mind. The synapses were so ravaged by the disease that I lost the ability to to really speak. And when something like that happens to you and something so devastating, um, especially during those years where all you want to do is fit in, right? It's yeah, like your the formative worst. years, yeah. Yes, and I'm watching all of my friends move ahead in their lives and, and I'm kind of left behind in the dust. Once I came through that, the gratitude I had for the most basic things, the ability to move, the ability to get up in the morning, the ability to speak is, is magnified immensely. And so not that I wish an illness on anybody, but I can tell you if I hadn't have had those few years in my life, I wouldn't have the sense of gratitude that I do today. And the gratitude of being able to speak or to give other people a voice and a platform and a spotlight, because I know how powerful it is to have it. And and I know what it feels like to have it taken away. Mm -hmm. And so that really has guided me. And I kind of felt from that moment on, you know, coming through that, that illness is that, okay, I've been given this second lease on life, right? I better make the most of it. And the worst has already happened to me almost, right? And so I just really had this developing kind of confidence over the years that, okay, whatever comes my way, whatever 
makes me feel that fear that all of us feel, I'm going to attack it head on. I'm not going to let it define me. I'm actually going to define what it is for me. And I'm going to cut back to what we were talking about earlier when I on South Florida came to me and they put me in front of the camera and I was a deer in headlights and, and terrified because it was a skill set I hadn't had yet. During that first filming, and I, I posted it so you can see it, it's horrible. I am falling apart in front of people. And that is everyone's worst fear yeah. is to publicly embarrass themselves. <laughs> And I asked them for a five minute break during that time because I couldn't get it together. My anxiety snowball was just getting bigger and bigger and bigger as I saw myself failing, the fear was creeping in. During that five minute break, I, I really took account and I was like, Molly, pull yourself together. What you're feeling, this fear, this like nervousness, you get a choice in that moment of what you define it as because fear and excitement feel the same. Fear is looking at it as the worst case scenario. Excitement is looking at it as the best case scenario. So picture doing your segment, doing it the best way possible, use those nerves and use fear to your advantage to get you more excited, more animated. You got this. And so now I made fear my friend. So, so I don't put the pressure on myself and I don't think anybody should to be fearless. That's not possible. It's actually going to work against you if you think that you're ever going to feel that way. However, you can learn to fear less and to use it to your advantage. And so that has made a huge difference in my life. I love that so much. And in my book, I have an entire chapter on fear. And when I talk about fear, you know, we talk about courage and how, like I said before, it's not the absence of fear, but we have the ability to, like you did before, shift the mindset. And it's so incredibly important to look at fear as something, like you said, it's a choice. It's a choice to let it take over your mind, to let it take over your world, or to use it as a tool to drive yourself forward and become even better. And I love your perspective fear less instead of fearless. So good. So good. I'm going to like loop that back to what you said earlier about being in front of the camera and because you work with people and you have them in front of the camera. And that is such an intimidating thing. What advice do you give to women or entrepreneurs who maybe don't have a budget to hire a Molly in their life to direct them in front of the camera and help them create these incredible videos, but to fear less about being in front of the video camera? It's such a great question. And we are so lucky that you don't need to hire me. I'm going to put myself right out of business right now because I'm going to say, you don't need to hire me. You can do it. We have these amazing things called phones, right? These Apple iPhones that have the video and the camera function where you can just record yourself at home. The impact that it has when you are able to speak from your own mouth, your own voice, and I can see your face talking about what lights you up, what you're passionate about. You cannot recreate that impact. No one else, if you have like a spokesperson or someone else talk about your business or your product for you, it doesn't register the same. It is so, so, so important to get yourself, your voice, in front of the camera. And so first thing, which is gonna be the obvious one is just, just to do it. Practice, 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 practice. Uh, the more you start putting yourself out there, even if it's five, 10, 20 takes before you feel comfortable enough to push the post button, uh, just at least get started doing it. I always say, you know, when people come to me for coaching on camera, I say, okay, get in front of your camera and send me a, a 60 second, 90 second clip of you talking about your business. And so they send me that 60 to 90 second clip and they kind of almost have like a newscaster vibe and it's very stiff and it's very, you know, this is what I'm supposed to say and this is how professional I'm supposed to sound. And then I go, okay, now send me another 60 to 90 second clip talking about your kids, your pets, your last vacation, send me that one. So then, you know, you go ahead and you, you do a 60 to 90 second clip just talking about that. Notice the difference between the two. Nine times out of 10, that second clip, you're more expressive, you're more smiling, you're leaning into the camera, you're focused. Keep that momentum in talking about your passion and your business, because that is what reads authentic. We don't have to sound and look a certain way to mm -hmm. resonate with people. It's actually working against you. Whatever sets you apart, whatever your little quirks are, some people have funny laughs, some people have funny movements. I talk with my hands, as you can clearly see, Robin. Me <laughs> my too, hands guilty. <laughs> So I used to try to keep them in my lap and it made yeah. me stiff, right? And so I'm like, nope, whatever sets you apart, go all in on that. And that is where it's going to make all the difference in how you come across in your presence. 100%. And you know, when I first started doing video, I was terrified. 
absolutely terrified. But, you know, one of the stories I tell in my book, You, Me, and Anxiety, is about how I had such an incredible fear of public speaking. And it really stifled my ability to be on video for a long time. And it was just take after take after take. But what I learned, and I love that you mentioned passion, because what I learned is that when I'm talking about something I'm passionate about, which is my business. I absolutely love to help women build brands. So, you know, when I'm talking about my business and my passion and how quirky I am that I totally geek out on SEO and tech behind the scenes, it comes through and I don't have to have a script. And I think that's the most important thing is when we try to do things from a script and we try to read it, we end up being stiff. And we end up being someone that we really aren't because our passions, our excitement, our love for what we're doing and our love for the people we work with doesn't come through. You bring up another great point there that I want to just highlight, which is it's so important if, if you look at what I talk about in my feed, it's not the spotlight series. It's about confidence. It's about pursuing your passions. It's what I get excited to talk about and what I'm passionate about. And by default, because you resonate with me and my message, you're going to be interested in what I do. Yes. And so it doesn't have to be about your business specifically. You can talk about the things that you're passionate about and lessons you've learned and stuff like that. And that will naturally make people curious about all the rest that you do and who you are and, and what your business is. 100%. And I don't think every single thing you put on Instagram has to be perfect. It doesn't have to be about your business. It can be about just the, the realities of life behind the scenes. And I think a lot of people forget about that and they lose sight of the fact that that's how we truly connect from human to human. So I want you to talk about, because you posted something this morning, actually, the day we're, we're doing the interview about trolls and how we can look at this not as, and I think this is so incredibly important when we're talking about entrepreneurial mindset, because we want to please, because we want to attract our ideal clients. And so we're concerned with what other people are going to think and say and, and feel about us, which ultimately is our personal brand. But when we are putting ourselves out there, that fear, again, we're back to fear and that lack of confidence in ourselves can really be damaged even more and hold us back even more when we have naysayers on our Instagram feed or anywhere on social media, cutting us down or, or bringing us down or, or disagreeing with our concepts that are aligned with our values, which are so important. So I would love your perspective on that. Yes. And it goes right along with what you were saying, how it doesn't have to be perfect to be put out there. I mean, I posted that with no makeup on. My hair wasn't brushed this morning, but I was so passionate about it because it was just another person telling me that, oh, they're going to take a post down because it got negative comments. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Don't take it down. Think of these three things before you take anything down or you stop doing anything that you're doing. And that is, and I'm really, really passionate about this because I have seen more dreams killed by negativity that shouldn't have been there in the first place. And you also do need to be able to receive constructive criticism. That's a whole other topic right? Um, because there are times where you do need to hear it. But three things to keep in mind, and I'm really passionate about this, is first of all, be smart about who you share your dreams and vision with. Because I have seen more dreams crushed, but because they went to the wrong person. A lot of us immediately will go to our partner, our husband or spouse, or a family member, be like, this is what I'm thinking of doing because that person's really close to you. And then they get like kind of a negative response or a lukewarm response. And they're like, oh, maybe not. But is that person your target demographic? Is that who you're trying to attract? A lot of times it's not. And so that it like kills me when people give up on something because the first person or the second person they went to didn't have the reaction they wanted. So that's the first thing. Second thing is, is that person who's trolling you or giving you a negative comment, are they in your field of expertise? Do they even know what field you're in and, and are they an expert in it to even you know, take their seriously, a lot of times, no. And lastly, you know, it, it's so important to me that we don't let other people's limitations be put onto us just because it makes them nervous, just because they don't see it and, and they've got their own insecurities doesn't mean you're not capable of doing it. And a lot of people that you see putting those negative, those keyboard warriors, those trolls, it's their insecurities, something you're doing, something, some way that you're coming across is hitting their insecurity inside of them. So before you react or get upset or stop doing what you're doing, just really think about those three things when you get that kind of response. 
Absolutely. 100%. And, you know, when you think about that and you said it, sometimes we do need constructive criticism, but if this person, there's two things that two thoughts I have on that. Number one, it's your opportunity to respond back very politely in a kind way, not in a defensive aggressive way, but to maybe explain exactly what your point is or why you said what you said, but you can say it in such a way that it doesn't become a banter back and forth, that this is why I did this period in the story. You don't have to defend yourself, but you can explain your reasoning. The second thing is that if someone is in your expertise and they do this to you and they're questioning what you put out and what your integrity is, the reality is that we as individuals have lived and had our journey for ourselves and all, every experience we have has brought us to where we are today. So instead of letting that experience shut you down or make you more fearful to put things out in the future, think about that as an opportunity to Maybe they have a degree in this area, but you have lived it. You've been in the trenches and your expertise is perfect for someone who is out there just waiting for you because of your message, because of your personality, because of how they connect with you versus that person that maybe has credentials, but hasn't lived it the way you've lived it. So just two things to add to what you said. Yes. To everything that you just said. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Molly, you have a shop and I love your gear. I have not purchased any of it yet, but it's on my list. So I would love for you to tell the listeners before we close out about your website, your shop and where they can connect with you and just really embrace you and your beautiful personal brand that you have online. Oh, thank you so much for the opportunity. If you go to mollydare.com, you can see, you can listen to my podcast. You can watch my spotlight series videos, but there's also a shop there that has, you know, the branding of a few different key words that I use that are like my mantras. One of it is daring, obviously a playoff of my middle name. You know, my parents named me Molly Dare, so I had no choice but to live a daring life. They're always like, I can't believe you're doing this or that. And you named me Dare. What do you expect? (laughs) Um, And then I also have fear less merchandise because it's not fearless it's fearless and you'll see like I'm right Robin can see I'm wearing one of my cuffs I love 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 wearing uh cuffs because it makes me feel like Wonder Woman so I have written on there there's daring and fearless these aren't out yet these are coming out next month uh awesome. in both silver and gold but everything else is available in hats sweatshirts uh t-shirts and there's also the aggressive liquor swag on there because I have been banned by Instagram because I like and comment quick for Instagram's liking. So they think I'm a troll at times. So I, I've been put in Instagram jail for being an aggressive liker, but I'm okay with it. I own it. <laughs> I love it. I love it so much. So listeners, that is where you can find Molly and mollydare.com. And then her podcast is on air with Molly Dare. So Molly, thank you so much for being here. This was a delightful conversation. And listeners, if you found this information about living with less fear (laughs) and fearing less, then please share this episode with your friends, family members who maybe you're experiencing fear or fear is holding them back and not letting them take that action to follow their dreams and, and discover themselves in a new way. So please share the episode, leave a rating and review, and we will see you next time. Thank you, Robin.